Welcome to the best of the Anthony Cumia Show. One hour of highlights from this past week. Comedy, politics, current events, and pop culture. All completely uncensored. Hey, Buster Brown, get in come here. Come here. Come on over here, Tom. Take a seat over right here. here. Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny is here. They're like, great. You know, they're, they're like, hey, just sit down. I'm like, I don't want to be the douchebag who crashes somebody no, else's No, no. Come on. Welcome to the show. You Two know we're grumpy talking? old guys bitching about how better things were in the old days. Right. Update three. <laughs> now it's three. Right, sir. Like, <laughs> sure, you can't. There's nothing better than churning your own butter. <laughs> yes. Well, all right. Buying well, it in a stick, no good. Tom, bring it up a couple of years. Yeah. We were... We were going with the uh, actual motion pi moving pictures. You know, well, wait, I, 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 I'm one chromosome away from being Amish. Uh, technology does not agree with me. So. No, huh? Uh, well, did you those... hear that gunshot up there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was happening. We were was like, shots are going I, off. I it's... thought that we were safe here. I don't know what the hell's happening. <laughs> you know what we were talking about? Behind the comic book depository. Tom, one of your favorite, <laughs> one of your favorite subjects. <laughs> Clock yeah. tower. One of your favorite subjects that yes. we're talking about is the anxiety we had when the coolest thing on television you ever saw in your life is about to be gone in like five minutes. And you couldn't back then. There was no watching it again. You couldn't get so it on you demand. Sucked, you you get... sucked everything yeah. you could. Yeah. You listened to the dialogue. I used to tape the little reel to reel and tape. And I'm and I'm what I'm doing is catching Jerry Goldsmith music cues. I was a musician. Right. And and you know what? It's like this anxiety pushed you obsessively to try and recreate it so well, that you could have it and you'd go uh, to school. Basically, you had to be the VCR because there weren't VCRs yet. Right. That's right. <laughs> Billy West's first gig was a VCR. That's right. But Be, be kind, rewind. <laughs> yeah. Do you know when we, you, you went to school and you tried to tell some kid that you saw this show last night, did you see it? Uh, tell me you saw it. And he goes, no, I didn't see it. Well, let me show you yeah. what it was, and you begin to do all the parts. And, yeah. and so you would act it out, or, or I really the would parts and the voices because I it. needed that fix over and over again. Now the kids today got a thing called binge watching. <laughs> yes, binge have you heard watching. of this? Everybody's binge watching now. <laughs> Isn't, uh, I don't care for it. You don't like the binge watch. I'm not a binge watcher. You're not a binge watcher. No, because I no. I have to pee after 30 minutes. So I, <laughs> Grandpa, I can't, I can't watch a whole season of Breaking Bad. I have to pee. Grandpa, did you ever binge watch? Did you ever try it? Because you might like it. Yeah, uh, give, it a, give it a whirl. All right, give me one hit. Binge watching. <laughs> that is kind of uh, the thing to do. I would rather binge watch something. Because I hated waiting another week for, for something. Yeah. So tune in next week for... Yeah. And, and it, w it was terrible. You'd think about it. Maybe, maybe if you and if you miss that episode, where the hell are you going to get it? Oh, the fall reruns. Maybe, maybe. Oh, yeah. So oh. you know, if you missed an episode of something, you literally missed it. You could not get it back. And this, now everything is archived for all eternity, which eternity. I think is kind of cool. But it does kind of, um, especially with stuff like comic books and records and stuff, which is my thing. Right. Yeah, like uh, you know, like like uh, it. It, took, it takes away some of that fun, like, like when we were kids, like you had to be like a spelunker, you had to be like Indiana Jones, like just go, go, go into parts of town that you shouldn't have been going to, to like find soul records and blues records and jazz records and stuff, and so he's like, I don't think you should be going down there, you know? Did you have but any like, friends that, that um, had comic books that you didn't know of or you hadn't oh, met yet? Oh, yeah. I, there was one and a half kids, you know, that <laughs> one and a half. I had about one and a half friends, if you want to think about it that way, but... I knew there was a kid across town who I heard he had some comic books. I and I, I was like Rumor. a homing pigeon. And I just started <laughs> out and found my way somehow to the guy's house. And I was like, you like comic books? <laughs> you know, it was like we found pictures. Billy's still using that line in a van. <laughs> what? Do you like comic books or do you want to see a puppy? If, yeah. I, if I didn't love you so much. You're nothing that four stabs in the back couldn't fix. Uh, stand in line. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, th this will kill you. It's like, um, yeah, you went to tell the, the kid at school, you know, and you'd act it out for him, and you'd feel so good all over again because, you, you know, we were like little freaks. You know, we were going to wind up in this business somehow. We're somehow. One way or the other. And, and so we were like... We were like little versions of what we are now is trying to, to have Sonics take over your head for a few yeah, minutes. Yeah. Or the printed comic book page. 
You can even learn history from comic books, like Classics Illustrated. <laughs> yeah. The crossbow incident. Yeah. <laughs> the crossbow incident. No, the incident. Occidental yeah. crossbow. <laughs> Silas Marner. Go, I, go back. Go to the comic book section and go look up Classics Illustrated. Classics Illustrated. You remember? I, I do remember the Classics Illustrated. I don't remember ever looking through them or yeah. anything. My uncle had gotten me these uh, pile of books. It was uh, Fangora and old, like those... Uh, print, monster mags. And they, yeah, monster mags. Oh, and they yeah. all smelt like mildew, like from yeah. the thick pulp pages yeah. and everything. But it was the uh, most This fantastic. smells like Forrest J. Ackerman's underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forrest J. Ackerman. I feel like a curator in a museum. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Everything we say was like, now Forrest J. Ackerman was the publisher. <laughs> he, he, he had a partnership with a man named Jim Warren, obviously the money guy. And they started in 1958. The first cover was drawn by, you know, Basil Gogos. Yeah. You know, and people were sitting <laughs> yes, there the going, curator. falling asleep. <laughs> Do you remember the old days with TV Guide, where the only way you could know anything about show business was if you went to the back of TV Guide and there was a yellow teletype page by Neil Hickey. Oh, God, it was all the uh, And like it would the say latest. what was coming up. Like, like the hot this, sheet, like the tip sheet? The hot sheet, but that was the only place you could read yeah. about anything. In show business, so it would say, two new shows calling, coming up this fall. <laughs> Lost in Space and a show, an entry from NBC, Star Trek. You know, uh, and I wonder I, how that'll work I out. waited for like three months, and then came the fall shows. And I was like, I, I, I think I was in front of the TV for like two days, like I was going to buy an iPhone when the Just new Just waiting ones... online for it to start. Yeah, yeah. For the show to even come on. Were you a, a big Star Trek fan? when? Uh... You know what? I loved it in... In some kind of a way, but I was too much involved with um, learning to be cool with the guitar, right. learning, learning how to express myself, and playing in a band. That I, I was more interested in Paul Revere and the Raiders than, you know. Hey, come yeah, on, Spock played that person. crazy Vulcan harp. That was. Uh, Remember when Spock jammed with the Space Hippies in that one episode? Bitter, bitter Drake. Hey, I man, think, the Vulcan's uh, really with it, baby. Yeah, you know, yeah. that was a good He's one. He's not a Herbert. I love the Space Hippies. Yeah, <laughs> Herbert. Yeah, it Herbert. Was the weirdest damn thing. But yes, trying to be cool was it was a fine line between being the nerdy geek that we we knew we were as far as technology and and science and the arts and things like that did you and draw? then trying to be cool yeah i loved did drawing. you draw i gave oh, it yeah, up of course i drew after i, drew, I realized but I it wasn't gave... as good as my friend who could draw naked girl pictures perfectly and he was like the most popular guy it was like probably fourth grade or something yep. and he was great at drawing the female form and that was all, the oh. only porn we had. If you can be the, if you can be the fourth grade Vargas, you're like, uh, <laughs> you're very popular. Yeah. It's the best of the Anthony Cumia Show. The Anthony Cumia Show airs live Monday through Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern in glorious high-definition video exclusively at anthonycumia.com. I've noticed this now. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time in the city anymore. You may have heard over the past year something happened. So I, I didn't have a a reason to really come into the, the city a lot. But from when I was coming in till now, it was a solid year, I have noticed a big change in the oh, so atmosphere Anthony. around New York City. <laughs> now, I'm just wondering, because you guys, you know, or especially Mr. Carl. Mr. New York. Yeah, you're Mr. New York. That's what yeah. you're known as, actually. Just voted yes. Mr. New York. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering, uh, have you noticed, being here on a daily basis, I've noticed this, a lot more degenerates roaming around. And this isn't a race thing. I'm noticing a lot of these young white dudes yeah. sitting on the corner, yeah. fucking begging for money. Uh, they belong in Seattle. Fucked up on drugs. Yes! <laughs> it's like Seattle. Yeah, it looks like Seattle. They just yeah. brought, brought it here. And uh, less cops. I see less cops around certain areas. Sure. And then they're talking about how the shootings are going up. And they stop the stop and frisk thing. Is this a mystery? Is this like one of those puzzles that is for three to four year olds four pieces that you got to yeah, put together exactly. that they can't put together yeah, exactly. to figure out what the fuck the problem is right. what do you think Carl? do have you noticed being here on a daily basis um yeah no i feel like it's getting a little shabby a little it's seedy a little right wildest, yeah a little freight because around the edges well even this block alone you know like i said it was like the 70s coming up here and there's a few more of those now yeah yeah you were uh colin was talking about coming up here and how this street is very reminiscent of streets in the 70s. It's got like an old, those old, just a cloth store. It's got like yeah, little a diners. Yeah, cloth store. A couple of like really greasy spoons, diners. Yeah. 
One place just selling birthday cakes and, and beer. There's you know. a hardware store. <laughs> it's a store. It's like, like a birthday cake store. Yeah. Birthday cake and store. Beer. You know what I saw yeah. right right down the road here? A fishing pole and tackle yeah. store. That's a gay. Like, that's, that's, fuck? that's a gay bar. You it's, think it's yeah. a gay bar? Something like that. It's a front. Yeah. <laughs> it's the fishing pole. Oh, okay. I See? heard. Uh, I went in there. I thought that hurt just to buy a fishing pole. Yeah. That was. <laughs> Good place to get bait, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but to, to me, it was like... Called the early bird. New York City, who's Nothing? going like, yeah, I really need a fishing pole. I'm going to... I'm hitting the intrepid later on. I'm going <laughs> to cast off into the fucking river and try to but that, hook a submarine. There used to be a lot of places like <laughs> yeah. that in Manhattan. Yeah, and yeah, very nothing. independent kind yes. of just mom and pop. Let me ask you, Queen. Now, did you think it got too sterile under Giuliani? Or do you like a little of this griminess? I, mean, I bet I, you're a little nostalgic I for I like it, no? it, of course, but... Because you used to visit them. I'm, I, I, oh, yeah, <laughs> the, the flesh pots of New York. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously I thought it was too sterile, but, you know, it's easy to look back, like I say in the show, where I glamorized taxi driver. But when you actually <laughs> live in there, it was, a, it was just like, it was like taxi driver. Yeah. It was yeah. nuts. Stores are getting robbed like 15 times. Like it the was, same store, just the same guys robbing them, you know? It is amazing when you watch Taxi Driver and you almost yearn for, like, that kind of adventure. Yes. And I think it is the sense of adventure. <laughs> yes, we like still love it. Safari or something. We love it. Nuts out I don't know. I could do without that shit. Right? We loved it. We loved it, yeah. But we, we kind of like the that. Street. But yeah, now it's just banks, drugstore, banks, yeah. drugstore. Starbucks. And when Giuliani was really pushing to kind of commercialize well, the, the people area, wanted he went to crazy. At the time. Yeah. But, but remember when they they had to do it slowly? So it's like, all right, porn stores, yeah, sixty percent, yeah, legit, forty yeah. percent <laughs> porn. They have to be separated. No, that was that that was a law. They just used the law that happened to be on there. It on was the on the books, books already. Right. That's oh, right. Well, and was, it's still that's still the case. And then they were selling, it was kung fu movies, because they had to find right. the cheapest inventory oh, you're right. to, to make it the 60%. So they got, like, kung fu movies and shit no one would want. I, got, right. I got Titanic and Anal Entry. <laughs> was was that one movie, Titanic and Anal, Anal Entry? And it was <laughs> and even more of, tragic. You got Fists of Fury, both versions. <laughs> both versions of Fists of Fury. Of <laughs> But it was kind of a slow thing, and then they would, you know, all the peep world things that uh, show worlds that were around. Oh, he just kind of. I mean, Giuliani had brass balls. People don't give him credit, but he went up. He closed the peep shows and the Fulton Fish Market. Do you know how many mob guys oh, got tied into both of those? And that's yeah. after he was the prosecutor on all that mob. After shit. he was the prosecutor on all the mob what cases, the fuck he do you think he did all to their stay alive? I, I guess just because he was the mayor and they were just, he caught them at the right time when they but were But what old. about if he's a dirty mayor? A mayor that's involved with drugs or the rackets. <laughs> we can go in there. We'll put a gun behind the toilet. <laughs> they not like a story like that, really. They like not like a story like that. The fish market was table. the real. The peep show and the fish market, because both businesses yeah. smell the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that uh, the fish market was yeah, b b all, all mobbed mafia. Up. Yeah, all mobbed. Yeah. Up. What did they end up doing with that? They moved it. They turned it into a CBY yogurt, was it? <laughs> yeah, 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 TCBY <laughs> or something like yeah. that. Hey, well, you want some yogurt? <laughs> we want kid some fucking yogurt. That was the funniest line in the Italian. Remember, talking about Italians in his in his oh, show. Oh yeah, and they they're not scared of do the. Can you do that? Oh, they're not scared of the uh, the the scared of. They're not scared, like, to go get the bats ready to fight, but if you try, hey, try this, yo what's that? Yogurt. Yeah, is it all right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's yogurt. I heard it's yeah. like a live, yeah, like, no, a culture. <laughs> I'm on the culture, right? They'll go out with bats, <laughs> beating the shit out of each other. And then for oh. years, they'll be like, hey, remember this sick bass with the yogurt? You're like, yeah, but Joey cracked the guy's knees. Yeah, but come on, this guy with the yogurt. <laughs> One of my yeah, favorite, yeah. I can't, I, and I brought it up to you, and I know, one of my favorite, because again, being Italian, I knew these fucking guys and shit like that. It was the, um, where, where you come downstairs, one of your Italian friends is outside, and he, he the first thing you say to each other, he starts it like he's already in mid-conversation. Right, right, right. And, and Carl, it's so fucking great, he comes down, the guy just looks at you, he goes, you walk down, he goes, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> two hours, it's like, What? <laughs> What? <laughs> it's so fucking funny, man. Oh, if you get really, you got to see Colin's show, right? Am I right? Am I right? 
Ace is high. Ace is high. <laughs> It's the best of the Anthony Cumia Show. One hour of what you missed this week because you're too damn cheap to pay for it. We were talking uh, last night about the prospect of doing a uh, World Series of Poker um, here what? and kind of having, you know, the, the, the card cams, the pocket cams, and, and do a whole thing uh, on that with, with the little shenanigan conversations that go back and forth. Can but it's always fun table? doing it. A crap t- We'll just open a casino, Keith. <laughs> Let's do that. We'll You're be like, like, like a Nucky Thompson from Atlantic City. <laughs> if anything, we'll a roulette table. Roulette table would be a something I'd like table. in my house. A roulette table. You like roulette? I love roulette. Uh, if you want to talk about a bad beat, I'm in front, I'm in a casino in uh, Louisville. I think it was Louisville. Maybe it was in Indiana. And uh, they're right next to each other, I think. And so I go into poker. I take out 200 bucks. I go in. First hand, I, I hit triples on the flop. So I'm fucking all in. This guy calls me. He goes all in. I get f- I'm up 400 bucks. I start bullying like the next two hands. Oh, now you have. To. I now I got him. And then the next hand, like fourth hand in, I get recognized at the table. Someone goes, "Are you on the uh, travel channel?" I was like, "Yeah." And now and I'm drunk as fuck. Oh, the shit. flop is two seven seven two one two and two sevens, and I got ace two. So I'm fucking like, "Fuck it, no one's got a seven. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'll pl- I, I fucking bully in. Guy looks at me and he's trying to get a read. He goes, I'm all in. I go, I call. No, no, I'm sorry. I go, I'm all in. And the guy looks at me and goes, hmm, hmm. And now I'm talking because I've been recognized. That doesn't happen a lot. Uh-huh. And I'm like, fucking, and I got the gamble. You know that feeling in your heart? <laughs> when you, it's the best feeling in the world where you're like, <sighs> I got this. Yeah, and the guy takes his fucking cards. He's got two aces and flips them to get a read on me. And and I look at him and I think he's called me. Oh, shit. And I'm like, motherfucker. And I go, well. Looks like I'm beat, and I flip my cards over, and he hasn't even called yet. And I'm like, and he goes, I guess I'll call. Oh, and shit. And I'm like, mother. And I got pissed. I go, you can't fucking flip your cards over like that. Like, And then he was, and then it was, I was the one it's loud like, mouth asshole. Yeah, you can flip yeah. them over whenever the fuck you damn well please if you want. You want to show yeah. everybody your cards. Wow, that's fucked up. That's not so much a bad beat as a stupid move. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was, I was, I was, I got on the S because it's in a riverboat, so I got on the escalator to go up to the did, next level. Did you jump and I'm off? just going like this, and going, I'm so fucking stupid, like Scotty J and Boogie Nights when he kisses Dirk Diggler. <laughs> fucking, idiot. fucking idiot! I'm a fucking idiot! I'm a fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot! I'm fucking. I love using four hundred bucks as a this jackass. Oh. Four hundred bucks. Crazy. I, I've you. tipped four hundred dollars to of a some bitch. of those dealers. I gambled next to him one night, that was crazy. and I got I was my hands were shaking, looking at him oh. pushing. Ch- I was like this. I was oh. like, all right, I just had to leave. Remember, I, I just had Played to leave. Three three hands, table max. He's got his own like Six thousand dollars a hand. So you go six, twelve, eighteen thousand. <laughs> On the hand. And then... Whoa, 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 you got like uh, four or seven. Uh, yeah, you, or, you, or you pull a pair of fucking, and now oh god, you got to split another six grand, double down another six. It, it's up to like thirty something thousand dollars on this one flip of the fucking Ugh. dealer's card. Dealer's showing a four. You're like, yeah, I got this one. Nothing worse than it's like four, seven, seven. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker! But that's good. It's like four, seven, deuce. Come on, get bam, color card. You just like, yeah, place goes crazy. Oh, yeah. And then there's the other ones where they pull out that fucking oh, 21, motherfucker. And then Keith just would tense up because he'd know. I'm like, bam! I just start punching yeah. Keith in the arm because I have to take it out. Did I got I got yelled at for punch? yelling cunt yeah, yeah. at the deal. I went, yeah. fucking cunt. <laughs> and then she's like, floor, floor, he's calling me cunt. I said, no, I called the cards cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> fucking twat. I was, I, was, I, was, I was playing blackjack with Teddy Bergeron. You remember how bad he I was gambling? Teddy, yeah. And he was yelling, they sell those at a magic store. They're fucking <laughs> the cards. <laughs> yeah, the, the the, magic the, the, the they're TV magic yeah. cards. But how the fuck can you not play? If you're going to gamble, play craps. Dude, I get wiped I out every fucking, time I step in on craps. I've never played craps. I don't fucking want to play. It's a whole new level blackjack of gambling. Blackjack is, like, to me, blackjack seemed to be the best chance at actually winning. 
you keep your ass in the seat long enough. Sometimes, you know, you get a good table going and they're, they're, we're rallying, we're killing the dealer. It's fun. Let me tell you what, yeah. craps, you want to know fun when the table's so hot. Yeah. Fucking the head of the clan is high-fiving fucking Farrakhan. It just okay? doesn't Everybody, matter. Right? Right? Right. Right. When that table's Everyone's so hot, pal. Well, they're fucking buddies. There is no fucking... game that brings in that kind of camaraderie. Yeah. camaraderie. When someone's yeah. yes. fucking hot, yes. the yes. table's like, oh, fuck yeah. 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 Really have fun, man. Wheel of Fortune dollar slots. <laughs> Listen, you look at you. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune dollar, do, yeah. dollar slots. What's the uh, payoff a, potential there? Do you ever play a series? You go to the high roller slots, and they have like the two hundred dollar, two hundred dollar uh, fucking you know spins. Yeah, and you have to do three hundred dollars or five hundred dollar spins. They're high end slots. Yeah, I I saw somebody play those once. A friend of mine played them, and it's Fuck. it's like you just hit the button once and it goes boom, and it's like ha, oh, just hundreds. <laughs> and that's hundreds. But gone. if you hit, if you get that stupid wheel, yeah. everything the lowest one is like three grand. Oh, okay. And you can win a hundred thousand. Just so you're saying, if you bet higher, you can win higher. <laughs> that was your what shit. A, what a what a I'm sorry. I thought that was your language. Gamble. <laughs> Captain Obvious, shut your but, but mouth. now, Rich, I don't know if you know this part. You could always also lose more I by betting more. Get the fuck See, out. it's not just winning more. Wait, See, you wait. could hit a quicker bottom. Right. Oh my God. I I, I took my mom oh. and my sister for my sister's birthday. We all went to Vegas, and I took my mom and my sisters to go play blackjack. They had never gambled in their fucking life. I got like, you guys are gonna love this. So I, I pull out like six hundred bucks, and I give everyone this fair amount. I got two sisters, my mom and me, and we all start playing. And my mom so and that's sisters, 150 a piece. Yeah, whatever. And so I should probably give them 100 bucks a piece. And so they that's just tear through it. Tear through it. Yeah. I mean, literally, like they're trying to give their fucking money away. <laughs> yeah. I go to the bank machine. I got more money. I double up. Here we go, everybody. D- literally tearing through it again. And I'm like, you guys have never seen someone so fucking bad. And they're they're like talking to each other. And I'm like, and they're like, is this okay? And I go, yeah, you can fucking talk out loud. <laughs> All of a sudden, my mom, my sister goes, wait, wait, wait. Are we playing him? I'm oh, like, are no. you fucking kidding me? Oh, no. They've been playing against each playing other. Playing against each other. <laughs> You're playing the fucking dealer is the monster. Go, yes, we're playing against him. Who have you been playing? I'm like, we've been oh, playing each my other. God. I was like, oh. <laughs> that was, was, oh. I was in a room. Remember we used to play dice at the cellar? Yeah. I, used, I got the dice. The I started bringing them. Oh. Yeah. You, were you there? No, I, I never had to show. I got would the, bring I, dice. I, I, I got dice down. Fields, I used okay? to bring dice. And we used to roll them out front. I mean, every... Roll them Kev, bones. Little Kev, Kevin Hart, uh, Keith. Of we'd course. all... Artie. <laughs> For we, my, we were gambling. It would be guys. like dollars. We'd play, but all of a so sudden... So how, how do you play dice? Do you roll it and it's just like there's a come out roll? Same thing yeah. as craps, Yeah, but basically, without, without all the side bets. Without all the side bets. But you roll and all of a sudden the money starts getting more and more and more and more. Yeah. And there's uh, and then there's another go- uh, game. There's three dice called uh, there's uh, the uh, right, center, left, or there's AC Deucey. You ever play AC Deucey? Yeah, hey, I played okay. cards AC Deucey. Oh. Okay, where you got oh. that fucking pot to get stupid? It goes from quarters yeah. to fucking thousands. Yes, yes. I know that happens. <laughs> Little Kev one day Deucey. beat fucking <laughs> beat Keith Robinson. Hand after hand, we're sitting there playing. And we started playing, rolling the dice. He was rolling sevens oh. out of the gate seven times. Little Kev, oh. boom, put it down, little fella. <laughs> put it down, bang. He starts doing it. Keith taking all his money. You know, oh. at the end of the night, yeah. on, on the weekends, you have hundreds. Just throwing hundreds down. Oh. Little Kev beat Keith Robinson seven fucking times. <laughs> and oh. then went like the last time, there was just hundreds. Rolled a seven. We fucking screamed. You mother- Grabbed it and fucking see you later, old man, and left. I've never seen Keith Robinson like fucked up. Like, <laughs> like he didn't have money. So like fuck, rent, right, 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 right. rent's gonna be a yeah, problem. He's thinking like, about rent and <laughs> rent's gonna be a problem. Yeah, it's not even like, like you ever see him doing like, I'm right, gonna pay this, I get home. Yeah, now he's <laughs> doing math in his head. Like, <laughs> he didn't even lose in a casino. He lost it next to a manhole cover. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was doing craps in Aruba. Me and my ex-wife were there. And I got fucking money all over the table. And I got, I'm fucking hot. I'm fucking, money's coming in. Fucking, and I'm, I and all it. of a sudden I feel, feel this hand grab my arm. And like a regular my size hand? Uh, my <laughs> wife, my wife. And oh, seven. Shit. I threw a fucking seven. And she fucking touched me and fucked up my roll. Oh. It fucked it up. And then we got home from Aruba. 
The next day, you know, we got home. She goes, I want a divorce. I go, you couldn't have told me that a week ago? Right before what you I fucking mushed me. <laughs> you fucking, and she got a divorce. I totally believe in the mush oh, like, yeah. like that. I've had people oh, yes. where I've been on a nice roll and uh, someone will come over. How are you doing? Oh, it's good. Oh, good? And then fuck. just... Fucking, I, I'm, I'm just getting 14s, 14s, oh, and the dealer's face, age, oh, blackjack, oh, yeah. and then I just turn, and I say, I go, you look, nothing personal, but you got to get the fuck out of here, you got to leave. They have I, people, yeah. I think the casinos really do have yeah, they do the cool, the old yeah. cool. I was yeah. in Amsterdam with uh, Tony Woods, and we were at a, just hanging out after shows at one of those uh, roulette tables, we're winning, just fucking winning, not big money, but we just keep winning. This little Guatemalan lady. <laughs> it is for them. Exactly. Lady. That's how I know she's the mush. Oh. So yes. these fucking. Was Dutch she wearing one of those walk. Guatemalan derbies that they wear when they're <laughs> taking the mule up the yeah. coffee hill she, on her head? Yeah. <laughs> she got rugs. Yeah. She, she kept, she would muscle in between us uh, and elbow us and oh, rub, that's... and we were Dude, like rudely. Just... And, we, and, every, and we'd lose every time. Rubbing your luck away. Then we'd come back. She'd come back again, this little lady. There's something to it. There's something to the a no. vibe. And everyone says, and, and believe me, I, I try to be a logical guy. I, I, there's no. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Yeah, well, sometimes. <laughs> when, when I'm gambling. There's no fucking. There's no scientific validity to bad luck or good luck or why. You know, if somebody sits at a, a blackjack table and, and people start losing that, it was that person's fault. Well, the cards I can't yeah. not believe it. it it's there's true. some vibe, Listen, a cloud. It's true. When he's in the casino, Asians come and throw fucking dollars at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That was pushing it. That uh, it was. was. No, that was like, you know what I mean? It was kind of good. Yeah, because he had he a, like a nice minute smile, and though. And he was he just sitting a... there waiting for you to stop. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. I got this one. You have a nice smile. I, ne- I never noticed that. Don't that you... Your smile is fucking... You It's electric. You're fucking... Oh, it's, look at God. that, the fucking smile. That's why I like him so much, man. Yeah, people, people love him. It's the best of the Anthony Cumia Show. The Anthony Cumia Show airs live Monday through Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern in glorious high-definition video exclusively at anthonycumia.com. This is the Legion of Skanks podcast. This is the Legion of Skanks podcast. What's the worst thing you saw in the ER? Perfect. Worst thing I ever saw. Good yeah, come on. Things. Greg's supposed to have some yeah, stories. Yeah. What do we got here? What ER was in his story. ass? Dude came in. Uh, he had his face bashed in with a bat. He broke his jaw right down the middle. His Oof. teeth were doing this. His teeth were crisscrossing. Oh, my Christ. Yeah. Wait, hold on. So they were cri- did they make was... you jump, jump? <laughs> <laughs> was he... Was it wiggity, 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 whack? <laughs> was it Daddy Mac or Mac Daddy? It was Mac Daddy. The top, the top was Mac Daddy. <laughs> they, uh, Did you have to flip him onto his stomach to take his clothes off? <laughs> <laughs> These are all fantastic We needed a jokes. semen specimen. <laughs> I got it. Daddy got it. Um, uh, yeah, his teeth were fucked up, and I don't like teeth. Teeth freak me out. So I, was just, I just didn't look at him. I was just like, ah! Oh, what's the scene here? And like, I had to take so was nice he, weather, was huh? He, was he like with it? And, and yeah, the most with it. He was just like this motherfucker hit me with a motherfucking bat. Fuck this! But I'm gonna get his ass. I'm, you're gonna get. You I'm can't a get murderous shit. brother, <laughs> rapist. He just confessed everything to you, and you're like, cool, yeah. man. That's cool. I'm gonna. Because that's yeah. totally true. You're gonna do that, but first we gotta un s your teeth. Yeah, I Bobby. Mean, so, you ever seen? You ever seen a dead? Any body? more accidents, Omar? Oh. Bobby? Oh, sorry. Sorry. He's My body. What? No, no, that's all right. Oh, that's you've ever seen like have you ever seen like a I legitimate saw one dead body? Dead body being pulled out of my neighbor's house when I was like Ooh. ten, really eerie. It sticks with you. Yeah, yeah. It, really, it was just in a body bag, and I remember I was just it was not like what the Undertaker did. I saw my grandfather. <laughs> I saw yeah. my grandfather at his funeral. It really freaked me out. Oh, I mean at funerals, yeah. No, no, but that was no. It. I mean like I, I, Mike, uh, Mike De Stefano creeped me out pretty hard. And then uh, when he was alive, but a dead body. I saw a guy get he shot. <laughs> he spit on Did him. You? You're like, wait, what? I saw a guy get shot. Ew. I drove by a guy getting shot on the ground in Philly, and I just kept going. So I, dead, I have no idea, but it was pretty point blank. It was yeah. a guy knocked a guy on the ground and like fucking shot, and I just turned right and just again, oh, again, the guy, Luckily, This is Philly. You have to understand. So it's like you I get a Newark. It's a it's a deal. You get a free cheese steak if you drive yes. by a dead guy. Like this happened. If yeah, you show your receipt, you could have saved that man's life. Jim. I uh, there's no way I could have. But it's uh, you could have called nine one one. I could have done that, but that wouldn't have saved his life. <laughs> Maybe uh, somebody else would have called nine one one. It was pretty point blank. I think the guy's dead. 
<laughs> but it's uh yeah I, just, I swear i hope his ghost is following you around for the rest of your life you think that's what it is making little fucked up things <laughs> happen uh, you think he's watching me while i whack off in the bathroom <laughs> i don't want that i'm sorry i was young <laughs> <laughs> it was my first car i was so scared please stop one. look away <laughs> we're gonna turn you on a little bit more if you knew he was watching now it would all right now that you brought it up like that man i was uh i was bringing up this old man to his floor i was in the er to bring up the old man upstairs so his family's like, oh, we can't fit in the elevator. We'll meet you upstairs. I'm like, all right. So I pull him on. I pull him on the elevator. And I'm looking at him. And he's just going, bah, bah. And then he just goes, <laughs> And then nothing. Oh. And I was just like, uh, oh, <laughs> hey, uh, bah, bah, whatever. We get off the elevator. The mom, the, his, his, it was uh, his <laughs> daughter was there. And she goes, what's wrong? What's going on with him? And I was like, why is that? Man, I don't know. And they go, they freak out. They hit the phone. They, they, they call a code. It's called a code. They code him. Oh, yeah. So they all, fall. the doctors are running in and they're like, oh my God, we got to They're doing this. Meanwhile, I'm just still pushing the stretcher. Like, well, we got to get back to his room. And I'm just pushing him. And they're like, quick, relax. We, we get him into the room. And he's dead, far, far and f- just super dead, the wow. most dead he can Did be. Do you have a crazy dead thing when you say he's like, he's like, hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, mean, see him just like, I just thought he came. I was like, ah, this guy didn't like, Good for you, you old bad. <laughs> he like passed on a secret to Craig. <laughs> yeah, he goes, remember <laughs> the undercarriage. What? It's in the undercarriage. What are you talking about? The cure yeah. for cancer <laughs> yeah. is. Uh, I got a fucking story. There will be no peace in so I'm, the I'm, Middle East. I pull him back. And they're all, like the people are doing CPR. I pull his stretcher in, and I'm putting his TV remote like into his room. Like, like oh, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do: getting his water ready and folding like, his pajamas. <laughs> yeah. and they were like, "Greg, he's he's dead." You're he's talking totally to him. Dead. Like, what do you want uh, tonight for dinner, Mr. Jenkins? <laughs> okay, Greg, we know we taught you the protocol, but come on, man. You following the Mets this year? <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you a slightly? Sli- a related story, but unrelated. All right, I'm just gonna tell you the story. We're fuck. Who gives a shit, right? We're here. You fucked that guy's uh, daughter. <laughs> I used to see a lot of people die in the ER. We would get people who would uh, they'd be dying and they'd go up to hospice. And my job was patient satisfaction, so I would just talk to them, make sure they were cool. sure the whack them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what it sounds like. Totally, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was a good timing. No, <laughs> my tax dollars are for nothing here. Right, what does come this on. job do? Make them come. Just make them come. <laughs> hey, why don't you? Hey, while I polish you <laughs> yeah, off here, why don't you jump on Yelp and leave a five star? Uh, I get this. <laughs> I deserve more. I really do. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little buzzed. I apologize. I just cut no. you off. Well, well can I also say this before you tell the story? Oh yeah. Greg, he told me before the show. He was like, "Dude, I know you guys smoke a lot of weed on the show, and I want to smoke with you guys, but I get kind of whacked out when I smoke weed." So I said, "All right, wait till we take the break, and then Greg can smoke weed and get whacked out." <laughs> so we're gonna get regular eyes. Greg and whacked out Greg, I get all for the price of one Greg. That's oh, great. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> I'm just like, well, everyone is here. What are molecules? Like, it's gonna, I'm going to lose my mind. By the way, that's not even a good time. description at all. I've hung out with Greg. Hi. This is what Greg does. <laughs> Greg just loves every moment in life. You could take <laughs> Greg to, like, you could say, hey, Greg, you're going to go watch a movie like, uh, and then take two hits off a bowl. And it'll be like, this is going to be the greatest movie ever. And then you could just, like, bring him to your apartment and put on, like, an old Seinfeld. <laughs> and he'll be like, this movie's amazing. Saying, like, how is no I like that energy. That's my, fa- I, that's that's my, that's my this favorite movie yet, but I lo- that's, that's my favorite guy. stoned energy. Oh, though, yeah. He's incredible. Like, great hang. Great hang. We want to listen to music, dude. I love music, <laughs> dude. Can you smell the music? <laughs> I was high the other day on the train, and a woman was staring at me. She goes, "What are you staring at?" And I just went, "The molecules." Like that's what I was like. That's what I was staring at. I wasn't looking at her. <laughs> I want to see fucking. Uh, I want to hear a story before Greg. we take our break. Yeah. So uh, this guy came in. Tell me this is kind of sad. I probably shouldn't be this laughy about it's it. Totally cool. Uh, guy comes in, fifty years old. We just watched a five-year-old <laughs> decapitated by a carnival ride, but we, we weren't happy that about it. Was five. Uh, <laughs> don't ride that stupid ride, you lame ass. <laughs> Serves you right for getting on the swing ride. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a gravitron ten feet away. You asshole. <laughs> you can impress a five-year-old. You fucking thief. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no, no please all good. continue. Uh, this guy comes in. He's got end-stage lung cancer, 50 years old, 50, 60, young. Young for that kind of cancer. Never smoked a day in his life. Oh. Uh, but I'm like, I'm talking to him. He seemed cool. Uh, they bring him up to the hospice. No one's talking to him. He has no family coming. So hospice comes down to me, and they're like, Greg, if you have time, go up and talk to this guy. Like, he really has no family coming, and it's kind of sad. And I'm like, yeah, totally. That's what I would do. Oh, dude, like, I don't, I don't want to, like, go ahead. Like, that is... I could not do that. It breaks my heart. That right there, like, I, I could not do that job. It would fucking kill me. No, 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 no. Stop the story. 
<laughs> I, I could never. <laughs> no. Hold on. I just want to. No, I'm just saying that's a very like uh, fucking tough job to do. I don't think. Could could you just like for me, bro? I just feel feelings too much <laughs> to ever possibly even put myself in that situation. <laughs> Sit down. I'll punch your face out unless it, unless it hurts your feelings. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Have yourself a hot toddy. I have some news for you. Oh, man. Uh, so, so, yeah. so this guy, I love this. The commercial breaks in these stories. They're the best. Welcome to Legion. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. We'll finish your story in like 35 minutes. Yes. <laughs> Coming up an hour or two in Legion of Skanks, Greg's story. Oh, good. Sorry. So the guy, they're like, go up and talk to him. I'm like, all right. So a thing I would always talk to people about is I would always be like, what is the thing that you're the most proud of? Because that would get people talking, like your kids. Some people would tell me World War II stories, like, you know what the fucking Nazis were like? I saw the fucking Nazis. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, Nazis were crazy. You, you don't really think what? about that. The Nazis, bro. Totally crazy. Oh, a bold statement to our fans. <laughs> all right. uh, Some of them were good people. Sh- you have so- no idea who runs this network. Ease <laughs> <laughs> up. I'm just saying they have families too. But all right, go, go on. People are people. Yeah. That's just as racist as saying all black people are criminals. So I'm talking to the guy, and I was like, hey, man, like, what, what do you think your whole life? Like, what do you think the most amazing thing you've ever done was? And he looks me straight in the face, and he goes, yeah, I've never been with a kid sexually. And I was like, yeah, me either. Are we awesome? Like I had no idea. I was like, "What do you?" I, I had no idea what he was talking about. Like, that was his yeah. regret. That was the thing. No, that no, that's was not even the regret. That's the accomplished the proudest <laughs> thing. He's, he's like the proud. Like, what's the proudest thing you're are, you're the most he proud of? And he goes, he goes, I've never been with a kid sexually. And I at the time I didn't realize what that meant. So I was like, Ah, oh, yeah, you know, me either, huh? Great. And and he he was like, No, you don't understand. I've been attracted to children my entire life, and I have never touched a kid and i've been fighting that he had i hate to get really sad on this oh our nazi boss is just like that except uh, the second part (laughs) and you're like cool man i'm gonna go grab you a yogurt (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm really here just to refill your water but uh, thanks for that do you want a small pink pitcher of water (laughs) (laughs) so do you want grape or cherry jello because that's what i can offer you can i get you another remote control that has only an up and down channel button (laughs) yeah so i'm i'm I'm, uh i'm looking at him and uh in my mind, I was like, yeah, like he, you know, he's telling me the story. He's like, I was with my, I had a mom. My mom would, she'd help me. I'd come home, she'd talk to me. Then she died of cancer. And then his dad broke his nose and he moved. Wait, from he wanted Cal- to fuck kids even when he was a kid? He wanted to fuck kids at like 16. And at then that point, his normal. mom knew that. He told his mom. So, wow. And his mom was like, don't worry, we can get you through this. Wow. Just talk to me about it. <laughs> yeah, was like, Listen, we'll get you some 12-year-old pussy. <laughs> Just fucking be patient, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a patient man's game. Yeah, so... Now, the, do you have any quaaludes? <laughs> the mom dies. He tells his dad, he's like, I need help. He tells his dad, he's like, look, I have these things. Mom, help me out. Oh, your mom's a prude. Just fuck some 12-year-olds. The dad breaks his nose. No. Tells his family, no. disowns him. No, he has to move from California. Now he lives in Jersey by himself with no family, no friends. Can't tell anybody. And, and a, a broken nose. And a broken. He's got a only, school to the left, preschool <laughs> to the right. He's got there's, a only, there's only one cure for that fucking pain. <laughs> Boy, dicks. <laughs> I like, by the way, that this story. By the way, I just know this story ends with him being proud that he never fucked a boy. So I want this, like, the next step is, like, some little boy comes out and goes, Hey, mister, can you check this cut on my butthole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either that or fucking, uh, or Greg pulls a nice murder in the first where he goes, he goes I've only got a few hours left. He goes, I'm going to go find you a boy right now. <laughs> you delivered him. I delivered that man a young boy 15 minutes later. He died with a smile on his face. Yeah, it was crazy. But like at the time, I thought that he was. I was like, I was like, this guy is an animal. He's a monster. I didn't really realize that this is the best guy I'd ever met in my life. Well, this guy's I, a fucking no. He fought, all, he fought he, all of his fucking horrible. It's amazing. How am I a good person? If I hold the door for someone, I'm holding the door. If he holds a door, he's holding the door, and he's not fucking a kid. Well, he wins. He, he wins the, the door holding contest. He had, that was a struggle in his heart I had to say every it. Yes, day. Yes, every fucking day. And yes, gets I no agree. credit. I don't know if that's gets the no best credit. guy in the world. What do you take the best guy in the world? Well, Muhammad Magandi, great. He did all these great things. Did he also fight fucking a kid? Maybe. Maybe. You just yeah. giving it to Gandhi. Yeah, right. He didn't go no, out and tell know. people. About it. Do you know? <laughs> he's not walking around. Do you know anything about Gandhi? I read the first three pages of the Gandhi book. And got, I can't understand. He's, he's not walking with kids. Are you kidding me? Did he? Really? Yes. No, he's crushing he sick puss. He fucked kids. Wait, are you saying the truth? Because I didn't finish the book. You read the rest. Kid butt. Huh? That's hilarious. 
But he, you can't put that under Tombstone. Is all I'm saying. Like you can't be like. Listen to me. All I'm saying smart. is you don't, oh, yeah. know, you don't I'm know. I'm on a hunger strike, but I'm still eating no, those tiny sausage ever, links. I get it, but look, I, I'm with you, man. I, the guy's not a monster. I feel I feel bad. We talked about this before on the show. You know, pedophiles. It is a sickness, and people won't even like talk about it. They're immediately like cast into the fire. Yeah. You know they're fucking sick, and they don't. Well, they won't even go and see like uh, like psychologists about right, it because, because they're so, so afraid of the jail. And, and, so, and even by, and people kind of like the idea that if you're that and you go to jail, you get the shit beat yeah, out of you. Yeah, and you get that. But there, there is a thing to like. Look, man, everyone's got responsibility for what they do, and that's why you're kind of like giving this guy respect because he didn't do anything. Yeah. But you go, everyone who has that impulse probably was like fucked over as a kid, was like yeah. had a shitty that's childhood. That's not true. That's five percent. There's nine, I did a research. 95% of pedophiles. Now, there's pedophiles and there's child molesters. Child molesters are people who Can molest children. Pronounce- Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on, here's yeah, the problem. He's way too much research. He's I did enun- a lot because I like He's enunciating the way you spell pedophile. Like he pedophile? Went, he went pedophile. Because <laughs> you know how it's like a P. Wait, hold on. Now, what are you saying? The difference between pedophiles and who touches kids? Uh, there's a difference. Kids? Pedophilia is the mentality that you are overly attracted to children. Apologies. And you're saying I five? You, I, 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 I'm saying a company have to stop. He said it how because he was saying it how? How would you feel you? Why would he have done that, you think? <laughs> because you spell it. Uh, spell it how? The, don't you spell it like no. you know, P-E-D-O, buddy. No, I think there's another way to spell Pedophilia. it. Pedophilia. No, look it up. I guarantee you there's another way to spell it. Fio pedophilia. Pedophile. He fucks pets. Yeah, he's fucking dogs. I don't know why you're talking about no file. You look up He said. No, but if you pronounce it like. By the way, Omar. Please, can we look up alternate like, spelling, please, so Lewis can feel stupider? Please look up alternate <laughs> spelling. Look up alternate spelling. No, there's like many different ways to spell every word. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. What, how do you think it's spelled? I don't know, dude. No, wait, Lewis. No, that's it. Go down. Lewis, do me a favor. Go back. Lewis, do me a favor. Go Wait, back. before he goes back, can you answer With that P-A. question? Go back. How do you think it might be spelled? Go back. Right there. P- right there. P-A-E-D-O. P-A-E-D-O. Yeah, right there. So you're... Hold on. Read that. Dinosaurs. Well, go ahead, read it. It's right, going to say it's just wrong. Say, I don't know who's commenting in the back. I don't want to hear your fucking opinion. <laughs> it's making me furious. By the way, that says it's just Lewis asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a you bunch of people, pedophile? Yeah, 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 I know. Bunch of people me <laughs> wrong. Look, in <laughs> British English, uh, pedophile spot. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't realize you spoke the Queen's English, bro. <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry, Prince Harry. But that, hold on. That's where it came from. It didn't come from some weird fucking hey, right. random thing. I, if, uh, if you're just telling your story, you're like, yes, yeah, so I got in the elevator. And Lewis was like, you mean the lift. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on vacation last week. Uh, holiday? <laughs> What's a college? Do you mean university? It sounds a lot like you're talking about university. <laughs> I rented this brand new apartment. Maybe you're talking about a flat. <laughs> <laughs> the Anthony Cumia Show. This is the best of the Gavin McInnes show. I also want to take a moment to commemorate the loss of a dear hero, Mr. Rowdy Roddy Piper. We lost. Was it this week? How did he die now? It, it, what? Heart attack. Heart attack. So Coke, in other words. It's, it's usually these guys have heart attacks on Friday nights, super late. Like John Peel, Joe Strummer. It's so is I mean I, I know Joe was just walking his dogs, but I, I get suspicious when when people that are famous and popular die a, late on a Friday. Cause you do a bump. I would do a bump right now. Barack Obama would do a bump right now. Have I explained this before? If you were if he was going to do his inaugural address and you jumped out, you go, What the hell? How did you get in here? And you go, sorry, sorry. Do you want to do a little, a little hooch manooch? And you go, my God damn it. Are you out of your mind? Would you like a little hee-haw? You go, oh, maybe a, just maybe a quick, uh, all right, fine. And then he would do a bump. And then he'd go, well, I have to even it out now. I can't just do one side. Jesus Christ. And then he'd sort of go, how am I? Am I good? Am I good? Are you sure I haven't explained this before? And then, because I've, I've made this clear many times, and then he would leave and he'd say to the Secret Service, guys, get him out of here. And what the fuck is the matter with you that he's in the hallway? And the Secret Service guys would be there with their sunglasses and their little earpieces, and they'd go, you're, you're coming with us. And you'd go, okay, okay. But uh, before we do, can I interest uh, either of you two in a little... <laughs> and they would go, no, absolutely not. And then... By the time we got to the car, I'd already 
dipped into the bag with the key and be like, well, I guess I'll just let this fall on the ground like Dr. Evil. And they'd be like, oh, fuck, get over here. All right. And then four bumps in. <laughs> and then I'd go to court. And in the courtroom, <laughs> the judge would go, this is despicable. You violated the national security. You put our president at risk. And I go, I apologize, first of all, Your Honor. And secondly, if I could approach the bench for maybe a little... And he would go, approach the bench. And then I would go over there and i go, so do you want a little toots magoots? And he would say, don't put it there. And then he would come around to the side of the thing and I'd have sort of palmed it like that. And I'd be like, yeah, well, let's agree to disagree on my charge. Then I'd be looking through that uh, one-way mirror thing about to get the death penalty. And I would go, do you have any last words? And I'd say, I'd like to apologize to all the families involved. And I'm not sure why I'm getting murdered for offering a few bumps to guys. That should be a misdemeanor, maybe a felony, certainly not the death penalty. But anyway, would anyone that's here to witness this want a little uh, hey-ho up the zuzu, if you know what I mean? I don't have any keys on me. Uh, I only have the bag, but maybe if the warden could scooch over with the key, and then I would do everyone in the jury box, whatever it's called, get them all tooted up. Then they zap me. Then I'm at the pearly gates with St. Peter, and he goes, what are you doing here? You're supposed to go to hell. And he's just about to pull the lever where I go through the cloud to hell, and I just go, word. And he's like, I had my septum removed. Because he used to be a huge cokehead in the glam rock days. Then I go to hell and fucking party and do tons of cocaine with no fucking hangover. Yeah! All right. Let's bring out tonight's guest. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a powerful comic, a married man, who has the libido of a hundred dinosaurs. His name is Chris Cotton, and he can be seen with the great Artie Lang on a, what, a daily basis? Uh, daily. A daily basis. This is, this is Artie's new guy. And I met him doing the uh, Bobby Kelly show. YKWD? YKWD. Uh, I didn't know to dress up for this. I, I, I'm really underdressed. And I feel like a piece of shit right now. I'm Good. Say that, that was the plan. <laughs> That's what we're going for. You know what I want to talk to you about, What's up? Chris? <clears throat> Race relations. Sort of. Yeah, uh, that's cool. So the Duggars are in shit. Mm -hmm. Because when one of the boys, and we're all familiar with the Duggars, right? 19 yes. and counting, reality show, Christian family, tons of kids. And there's this huge scandal where uh, the boy, when he was 17, I guess, he touched his 14-year-old daughter's tits. Yeah. He touched... Can I touch your tits? Yeah. Touch them outside. Uh, okay. Oh, you were thinking about whether you were saying yes or no. I, I was going I to say yes. Yeah. I was going to say yes, but you jumped the gun, so technically I was molested. We, we could <laughs> rewind the tape, but I think... <laughs> When my hand touched your tit, it was uh, in a yeah. I, uh, it wasn't like uh, yeah. I don't think that's gonna happen. I, was I doing heard a lot yeah. Of noises. I was doing a lot of noises, and I'm gonna say that's half my fault. So that molestation. Well, don't start coming. your noises out with the word yeah. Uh, yeah. If you don't want your tit touched. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it looks rapey. I'm looking at. The, I'm looking at the playback. It looks pretty rapey. Experimenting. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, uh, what about so, this? So he touched their tits outside of their clothes. Yes. I think he also scooched in and touched their booby. Mm -hmm. um, you and I grew up totally differently, but we both grew up in this... Wait a minute. You're only 28. I'm 28. Okay, so we have nothing in common. Probably not. But <laughs> when I was a kid, maybe being a, a Canadian redneck kid is the same as growing up black. Because mm -hmm. when I was a kid... There was all kinds of that shit going on. 
Uh, I can't argue with you. Well, this is the thing. I, I very rarely, I, I talk about it every now and then, but I had a cousin who, who uh, I mean, she got a little aggressive. Uh, I had one cousin, I had one, she was slightly older than me, so my mom's side. Every, everybody who I usually refer to is also my dad's side. We don't really talk about my mom's side of the family. She Why not? got, I just don't like him. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I don't have a lot of positive stories from her are side you, of the are you? Do you have beef with your mom? I love my mom. My mom was dope. It was my mom was sick since I was a kid, and they just didn't help out enough. Oh, it was that scenario. I like so that it's kind like, of beef. yeah, it's like one of those things where it was like we just beef. don't like each other because they were pieces of shit. Uh, most of them. And some of them were really nice. I mean, they were really great and they did a lot. But one of my cousins on our side, the predominantly female side of family, like my family, men. All of, my dad's side predominantly men. My mom's side predominantly females. And I had a girl cousin. She, I got a delicious molesting growing up from her. I, I, How I, old were you at the time? I was about uh, like seven or eight. And How old was she? Like eleven or twelve. There's no scandal there. I, I wouldn't say it's a scandal. I wouldn't say it didn't affect me. I didn't realize how right. dramatically this affected me until I hit uh, like two uh, uh, six months ago when I recalled the situation and I realized uh, well she was she wasn't just like touching me she was sucking my dick now aside from that I realized it is that kinda, the one where you said suck my dick bitch? she was she it was it was it was getting because nice there was a girl this could have been a different one where you you were still a child and you said suck my fucking dick bitch. I did not say that but she made some moves and she initiated there was another girl you said on the Bobby podcast where you said suck my dick that was a different chick that was a, see that was and he school. was a child the whole time when I was a kid <laughs> that was at school after I my dick was getting sucked Darren Norris's penis and I went like this <laughs> and didn't let it touch the sides or anything because that's gay Mm -hmm. Cameron Newbert made me tickle his pubes until the birdie comes out, which means he gets a boner. Yeah. Uh, Brian D Donaldson and Jared McIntyre had a whole fucking 69 sesh at one of my sleepovers sucking each other's knobs. And they go, you should try it. And I go, that's gay. And then one of them bars his guts out and ruins the whole sleepover. Yeah. I'm not condoning any of this or suggesting anyone pursue it, but... What I'm saying is when you hear this Duggar story, you go, yeah, well, that kind of shit yeah, happened. Yeah, you. you had a different upbringing than I had. <laughs> That's a lot of male-on-male -male touching. It was a, like I, I was touched. All the touching I did was all with females. Like it was it, after that, I was just so like even that to now, like I have this, this whole thing. Like I love women. I'm, I'm not a I just don't want any dudes dick. Yeah, no, close. believe me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, was, I was not refusing pussy <laughs> at eight years old, but there was just none around. Excuse me. Get that pussy out of here. <laughs> I want that little baby dick in my mouth. <laughs> I want Brian Norris's dick. Come over here. You could do the same to my pussy. You could put your tongue in it, but don't touch the edges. Uh, no, thanks. I'll take the penis miming for 10 hundred, Alex. Uh... <laughs> I think that might have, you know what's funny? I never thought about this aspect of the story. I didn't start eating puss until I was in a solid relationship. I was a good five, four, three, two years in until I started eating pussy in and general. you think that's because you were raped? Probably because I just was okay, eating, that, I was at a kid, I was eating puss as a kid. Don't wreck my hypothesis by straying from what I want you to say. Let's go. I want you to say <laughs> that all this shit was normal and the Duggar shit is nothing, and we're probably focusing on it just because they're Christians, it's, and we all did crazy shit. Don't say it traumatized you. We all did you, crazy or shit. Or that kills my theory. We all did crazy shit, but it is not normal. It is not normal, and it fucks you up. But it fucks the, you but up. But the very addition of, definition of normal is when it happens a lot. I don't know, man. It's not normal. It ain't right. It, what, what it's it not is, right. It's not it, right, and it, and it messes up your your kid brain. Like your brain, something, something clicks on that wasn't supposed to be clicked on that early. Oh, I totally agree. I totally that, agree. That, that's what happens. Yes, I'm just saying that it happens so often that to make it into this massive controversy is a misnomer because all that shit. Because I remember Kim Gustafson when she was a little girl. Uh, they were playing doctor, and mm -hmm. I wasn't there. Oh, I got a lot of good doctor but games. They all started biting her really hard. Okay, that's creepy. And these are all eight-year-olds biting this naked girl on the tits and the ass and everything, male and female. I mean, it's it's a retarded mess. You also did stuff like, you know, there was that one dude who would kill frogs and rip their tongues out. See, I didn't have. See, this is the thing. I was. This is the problem. I had. I gravitated to all the kids who when they were playing doctor and they started biting her. 
All my friends are all me and all my friends are the kids. I'm like, hey, man, stop biting her. You come with me. And we would walk away and be like, you all right? And we would just we put the long game in because we know that when she turns like three more like years later, I could probably fuck her. <laughs> I'm like, I had long games, game. By the way. I know what you're saying. I know you what age you're talking about. You had the long game of eight. <laughs> I had the long game since I was like fucking seven. <laughs> like, since the first time my dick went in my, my cousin's mouth. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever said that statement out loud. Wait a minute, stuff. wait a minute. This is the first time my, my... You started out implying that those blowjobs were rape and they traumatized they were, you. And now they're this listen, awesome gift that they gave not the awesome. Game. They weren't awesome, but they are what they are, and they created a monster for, for a lot of years. Of I did a lot of debauchery shit, and I felt nothing. The Anthony Cumia Show. Now we're talking uncensored. If you like what you hear, visit anthonycumia.com for subscription information and show details. And never miss a minute of fully archived shows available at any time in streaming HD video or audio download.